Hey guys, Mal here. Welcome to part 2 of the Rust 101 series. If you're new to Rust and you haven't seen part 1, make sure you go back and watch it first as we're continuing on from there. Just before we get started, I wanted to thank the Corrosion Hour team. In case you haven't heard of it, Corrosion Hour is a website dedicated to Rust info. They are an amazing source for admin server commands and much more, plus they have their own Rust server which is awesome. They were kind enough to feature me on their website and I wanted to give them a shout out for it. So make sure you take the time to check out their site. Now when we finished last time, we had our 1x2 with an airlock and we were ready to explore the world of Rust. First, get some wood and make a few storage boxes, because today we are going to be farming a lot of new things and you're going to need somewhere to store it all. Once they have crafted, pop them down somewhere like this. If you haven't already, then soon you will most likely start starving to death. You can see your food and water levels in the bottom right. We didn't cover food and water in episode 1 as honestly it's more important to get your base started, however now it's time to start looking after yourself. If your water is empty, you won't be able to run. And if your food is empty, you'll start slowly dying, so it's important to keep both up. You can get water and food a number of ways. The easiest way is from a supermarket as they have food crates which will have water and food in them like this. However, you do have a higher risk of players being there and may have to defend yourself. You can also find food crates along the road like this. Alternatively, you can drink directly from the clear water streams for water and you can kill animals such as chickens, deers, horses, pigs, wolves, and bears for their meat for food. Deers and horses will start running when you attack them, whereas pigs, wolves, and bears will attack you, so be careful. That being said, you can trick them by getting up on a rock or building a high foundation so they can't reach you while you kill them. Once you get 30 bone fragments from animals, craft a bone knife. They'll gather resources from animals far more efficiently. To cook meat, you're going to need to craft a campfire, which I recommend having inside your base. Keep an eye on the meat though, as it will burn if it stays in there too long after cooking. You can also find mushrooms, corn, and pumpkins in forest areas or by streams. Oh, and if things are really desperate, you can resort to cannibalism if you have to. However, human meat dehydrates you pretty badly. Now hold G and it will bring up your map. If you right click, you can then use the mouse wheel to zoom the map out. And right clicking and holding the click will allow you to drag the map around so you can start to get an idea of where things are. What you are currently looking for is a road. It doesn't matter which road, but ideally one that isn't too close to any of the big points of interest such as launch site or dome, as they are usually high traffic areas for players. Once you have found a road, start heading there. Along the way, you want to keep an eye out for metal and sulfur nodes, which look like this. You can also find little bits of metal and sulfur in the same way that you found wood and stone in episode 1. Road spawn barrels which you'll break open, and boxes which you can just open. You're going to find a lot of different components and items inside these, and you need all of them. If you find a machete, sword, or a cleaver inside a box, you should start using that to break the barrels, as it will save you time and durability on your tools. Speaking of tools, if you find a metal pickaxe or hatchet, immediately run back to your base and put it in a box. I'll explain why soon. Spend some time farming the barrels and boxes along the road. As with farming anything, make sure to go back and bank your loot regularly if you don't want to lose it. Now we are going to take a closer look at the things you're getting. These are components, and they are used to craft items. However, you can't craft some items until you have learnt how to craft them. In order to do that, you must first find the item that you're wanting to craft so you can learn how to craft it. That is why I said that if you find metal tools, you need to get them into your base as soon as possible. This is where another item you've been getting comes into play, scrap. Scrap is basically a currency that you will use to learn how to make things. You will have a bit of scrap from farming the barrels as they each drop two scrap. However, you're going to need a lot more and that is where components come in. Eventually, once you know how to make guns and armor and such, you will hold on to your components. But as it currently stands, all the components bar rope, 
are pretty useless to you. At a number of points of interest, such as the supermarket, gas station, harbour, mining outpost, and launch site, there is a recycler. You can put your components in them, and it'll recycle them, giving you scrap among other resources. This is by far the best and fastest way to farm scrap. However, be careful when doing so, as these spots can be PvP hotspots, given that everyone wants to use the recycler and loot the place. Once you have 125 scrap and 300 metal frags from recycling, build a level 1 workbench and a research table and put them down in your base. You'll need the workbench in order to make the research table, so build and place it first and then stand near it to build your research table. You should see a workbench buff in the bottom right when you're close enough to it. If things are getting a bit tight for your liking, feel free to expand your base a little, just ensure that you still have that initial airlock on your entrance. Also. The research table can be picked up with a hammer in your hands, so you can just put it down whenever you need it if you're low on space. If you put an item that you want to learn to craft in the research table, it will show you how much scrap you need for it. For example, the metal tools are 75 scrap each. Additionally, you can put scrap into your workbench, which can be used to experiment. Experimenting will give you a blueprint for something that you don't already know how to craft. Each level of the workbench gives you different things, and doing this can be worthwhile if you get lucky with what it gives you. That being said, I wouldn't waste the scrap on it unless there is something you are really struggling to find. Now as well as the components and scrap, you may have gotten some low grade fuel from red barrels. There are a few uses for it, however the most important use at this point is making a furnace. You're going to need 50 fuel, 200 stone, and 100 wood for it. If you didn't get enough fuel for it, you can either go and farm more barrels, or if you've killed any animals, you can use animal fat and cloth to craft more. The last option for getting fuel is in mining hats, which, funnily enough, you'll find in mines. That being said, you should get plenty from the other methods. Once you have enough fuel, craft your first furnace and put it down. Now you're ready to smelt any metal and sulfur you have. In your furnace, you need wood as fuel, and then you need a space free for the charcoal that burning the wood will make, and a space for the cooked resource. That leaves you with three spaces for your uncooked resource. Usually, I'll put a stack of wood in, and then split a stack of metal or sulfur across the three slots. If your furnace gets full, and it has nowhere to put the charcoal or cooked resource, the furnace will turn off. To split a stack of something, you can use a slider here, or click and drag with your scroll wheel, aka middle mouse button, to split a stack in half. Use your first 150 metal frags to craft a sheet metal door. If you already have a wooden door down in the inner doorway, you can remove it. First, hold E on the lock, unlock it, and pick it up. Then, open the door, hold E, and pick it up. You won't be able to pick it up if the door is closed. Now put your new shiny metal door down. Lock goes back on, and make sure it's locked. Your base is now safe from people raiding you with a flamethrower. Keep in mind that if you're a solo player, you can stick with the key locks. However, if you are playing with a friend, they won't be able to open or close the doors. If that's the case, then put your next metal frags towards making code locks, which are 100 metal frags each. You have to pick up your key locks before you can place a code lock. Hold E and set code. You can click the numbers if you want, but your numpad on your keyboard works too. Whenever you're changing external doors, make sure to check that nobody is around. If you have a friend, get them to stand outside and keep an eye out. You do not want someone who just happens to be wandering by to set your code. It will lock you in your own base. Do not say the code via in-game chat of any kind. Either message it to your friend on Steam, or if you're on an external voice chat, tell them there. Additionally, if you have people that you only want to allow basic base access to, you can unlock a code lock and then you'll see set guest code. Enter a new code and then lock it again. Give them the new code and they'll be able to open and close the doors, but they can't change the codes to them. Lastly for this episode, we are going to upgrade your defenses a little. While farming barrels, you should have found some rope. Take 4 feet of rope, 75 metal frags, 15 cloth, and 900 wood. Now craft a crossbow and a wooden armor set, which includes a helmet, chest plate, and pants. Congratulations, your base is now more secure, plus you now have basic armor and a much better weapon. If you enjoyed this video, or it helped you, please leave a thumbs up and a comment so I know, and I will continue this series and teach you more about Rust. Also, if you don't want to miss my content, subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.